At this time, our next speaker really and truly needs no introduction. He has served us as Prime Minister for the last 16 plus years and has been doing an excellent job. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for our Prime Minister, Dr. The Honorable Ralph Stephen Saad. Mr. Chairman, Cabinet and Parliamentary colleagues, His Excellency, the Ambassador of the Republic of China and Taiwan, Your Excellencies, the Cultural Ambassadors here, Chanel McKenzie and I think I saw Luther, yes, and any other? The distinguished former parliamentarian, Dr. Linton Lewis, senior public servants, senior members of the Royal St. Vincent and Grenadines Police Force, the people of East St. George and the country and the children, and all others who are here. But thus far, I mean, this a very important event, including Pastor King, who led the blessing. Recently, there has been much emphasis in the public media and on the internet on lamentations. Every difficulty, every challenge is magnified in the quest to put us in a mood, in a mindset, a mental frame to paralyze us and let us stay in the land of doomsday, the land being the terrain in their heads. Even the Hebrew people who are in captivity and justified the lamentations of Jeremiah. That in the lamentations and in the writings of the prophet Nehemiah himself, he did not stay in the terrain of negativism. He looked at the inherent goodness of the Hebrew people, of the people of Israel, and their achievements. And most importantly, he did not allow the demonic spirits of those who would wish to keep us with negativism. Instead, he rightly pointed us that through the mercies of God, whose compassion fails us not, and morning by morning, New mercies we see. All that you and I need, thy hand had provided. Greatest thy faithfulness. So, 
We must focus on the positive and on the faithfulness of Almighty God to us. And we must know and feel it. That his amazing grace has brought us safe thus far Amen. and will take us safely home. Yes. We must do so by combining divine inspiration and human intelligence, human creativity. Look around us here today and let those who are prophets of doom and gloom, let them close their eyes to what is before us now. And we say arise. And we are arising and going to our Father. The lamentations, important as they are to recognize one aspect of human reality. Look at us here today, look at the reality before us. Pastor King with the Glen Baptist Church in this constituency. Right up there is the Anglican Church. There's a Methodist Church immediately ahead of us. Huh? I ask this question, how many persons who go to any of these churches and any other churches, do you see line up in the magistrate court and the high court in Kingston? How many persons who pray morning and night and they go and they ask for forgiveness and in quest of redemption? Huh? They don't find themselves pulling trigger, wielding cutlass and knife. The next thing you know, you'll tell me. That Cain killed Abel because of Adam. Let us keep our focus. I ask the question again. The young people who play on the steel band, epic songs, and all the other players on pan and the pan against crime, tell me how many of them do you see in the magistrate court and in the high court. Tell me. I want those. I allow them to talk, you know. Because I want them to expose themselves. Paul, servant of the Lord, called to be an apostle. He never used to talk too quick, you know. He used to let some other people talk. Let them go ahead. Let them run off them all. Then somebody get killed. Ralph ain't say nothing. Yeah. I wait in, you know. And I will talk at the right time. No. I ask this question 
the people who are singing Calypso and those who are in music like Chanel with Soka and Darren Andrews tell me if you see them lining up and going to the magistrate court or the court in Kingston they are in court I want you to tell me that look at what we have here There is a road, there is a, a national scholar. His name is Stuart Haynes. That is goodness. He's not 40 years old. But we put him in charge of the national insurance services. The National Insurance Services has assets of $500 million. Yes. Not 500 cents, you know. <laughs> Not 500,000, 500 million. Yeah. Eh? Isn't that goodness? Hughes <laughs> eh? yes. Duggan, who is here? My age group did medicine at the University of the West Indies. Went and did graduate work in medicine, became a surgeon, the top general surgeon at a major hospital in New Jersey and came back here to serve his people. I want you to tell me if that is not goodness. What some people want to do is to take particular incidents. We must not underestimate them. And we have to fight and struggle to ensure that citizen security is held aloft. And there are several things which we have been doing and more things to be done, including in the family. But, at the end of the day, is a bad-minded fellow who is greedy, who want to make a whole heap of money in a week rather than to work hard in accordance with the gifts that God has given to him and which he has developed no no you hear me the point is this Linton Lewis In Linton Lewis here in Talakwa, a hometown boy. Goodness is represented in him. A teacher, a musician, a cricketer, an accountant, a lawyer, he got a PhD. The fact that he lost an election doesn't mean that he's not a person of worth and merit. We have to emphasize persons like this and not to get along the path of just negativism. And trying to stylize the facts in search of a theory of explanation. And I can go on and on. We have several thousands of Vincentians at home and abroad 
who are graduates of universities and professionals of one kind or another. Hmm? And by the year 2030, I expect at least one university graduate on an average to every household. We have 36,000 households in this country and we are attracted to that. And people tell me, well, you're educating them, but where are the jobs? What government is doing about jobs? Well, government can't employ everybody. But I tell you this, it's better to have education in your head and skill in your hands than to be stuffed with ignorance because that is the most dangerous weapon of mass destruction. I wanted to take us back to fundamentals and not to allow this foolishness which is passing for intelligent discussion. Eh? And that If you find a pothole that you blow it up, but you don't talk about all the road of things. <laughs> eh? And if you have a choice between filling the pothole in the road and the pothole in the brain, <laughs> you deal with the one in the brain. <laughs> You see, I want us to keep our focus. This facility here, I listened carefully, was designed by a man from East St. George. It was built, the, construct, the contractor, Miners is a man from East St. George. The bulk of the workers came from East St. George. And you want to tell me instead, I must embrace the apostles of negativism and those who spout only lamentations and don't talk to me about what is great and good in our land and the decency which resides in the overwhelming majority of our people. There are some people who want to frighten you to the polling station in a particular direction. <laughs> Just like how some people who even from the pulpit, they just tell you about lamentations and want to frighten you to heaven. <laughs> Christ never tried to frighten any of us to heaven. Preach a message of love and redemption. Hmm? We just have to be focused, you know. And as I speak, there are hundreds upon hundreds of persons who finish school without CXEs and some with some CXEs. And they go into evening classes. That's goodness. There's a woman who cleans at the residence of the Prime Minister. A few years ago I said to her, I say you're an intelligent woman. Why you don't go and do some CXEs? She said, Prime Minister. I got children who are doing that. I said, but girl, you just gone past 40. What are you talking about? 
A few days later, she came back. She said, I was thinking what you're saying, and I'm going to start. Within a couple of years, she had six CXCs, including English and Mathematics. And she did others afterwards. And then when she finished that, she went and did an associate degree. You hear what is happening in this place? Not people who fighting one another in a particular geographic area. Over some family feud or territory or drugs or whatever they're fighting over. I tell you this. It is appearing as though it's the first time that it has happened. Yeah. You could ask Parnell Campbell what I'm about to tell you. This was about 1986 or thereabout before he went and became Attorney General. He and I were involved in some legal work representing some people. In the Vermont Valley, in the hills above, lands owned by the crown. Notice the year, you know, 1986. Lands owned by the crown. Some people decide that they're going to occupy the lands and they grow ganja. A man who was a King Kong in Paul's lot at the time bought the ganja in the ground. And the ganja grows so nice that a fellow who say he was come picking up the forest, he and his gang went by, held them up, beat them and injured them. He came and told the King Kong in Paul's lot, <laughs> we can't take this thing. Come for your weed, eh? we can't protect it anymore. The King Kong in Paul's lot, who is no longer in Paul's lot. He sent his squad looking for Compe. King of the forest can't find him, but find, find a family. Chop him up and put up inside of a crocodile. A crocus bag by the water. Like it's the rivers of Babylon. <laughs> you hear me? You know what happened out of that? One of the persons who was involved in the beating, he died in police custody. Another one who went up there to do something. A young man years later chop off, chop off his hand. He left hand for me. The other man had to run out of town. The lion of the forest also left down there. I'm told that he's in hand of your majesty's prisoners for a long time on something else. That means 1986, you know. I wasn't Prime Minister. But that doesn't mean that the lamentations should detain us and belittle us as to who we are and the goodness in us. I give you the historical reference to show you that amidst goodness in human civilization, there is some iniquity and badness. And life is one in which we have to seek to do the best and to be guided by truth and by light. Now, I am 
understand that the one of the person who sang here with Darren, our cultural ambassador. You see what people don't understand, they don't get to know people and the quality of people. When you see Chanel singing on stage and she making her moves and she kicking her, her feet in she high heel shoes. <laughs> and you see how she moving. You don't know that she has a serious head on her shoulders. She's going off on Friday to study at university. I think she's going to do accounting. Accounting is going to do. That is what I call goodness. And we have to uplift ourselves. I want to pay tribute to those who have trained these young ladies and young men to play this, these parts. And we have to thank them. And we have to thank him or her. I want to say this too. When you train people, you must not yourself represent a block to the further progress of people. You hear me? You mustn't do that. Never do that. And nobody has a proprietorial right to ban in St. Vincent and the Grenadines or any part thereof. <laughs> and I want those who have helped in the past not to pull themselves down not to help in the present. And if you don't want to help in the present, don't try to block those who want to advance. <laughs> I'm saying to you that I am on the side of the future because of all time only the future is ours to desecrate. You can't desecrate the past because that don't go And the present is the past because as soon as a minute goes the past but only the future we could desecrate. And I want to be with you to make sure that in relation to your pan, I am going to get thanks to you. Remember this? When I came to office, you had Three pan sites. You had potential. On the brother Gray. <laughs> you had Starleaf. And you had Cyan Euphonium. There was a group of young people like yourself who were called Eurythmics, but they didn't have their own pants. They used to borrow from the girls' high school. And when I heard about it, I asked Doggy News, go up by Glenn and ask him, my brother, I hope he's listening. God bless you, Doggy. <laughs> President of the European Movement at the time. I provided $35,000 for signing euphonium to get a new set of pants. Gave $30,000 to Eurythmics. And that's how it started. And then, that's 2001. In 2002, 
I said, we're going to have a panorama. My brother Gray didn't participate in the panorama. <laughs> but nothing can hold back a movement going forward. So Sianiel played, Starlet played, and Eurythmics played. First, second, and third, everybody get praise. <laughs> Because Pan was no longer, Pan had not been, there had been no panorama for about three, four years. And then it picked up. Bit by bit. Started as a trickle. Then Petro Karim, and it's a flood now. <laughs> eh? So I tell you this. Send your Leader or leaders, come look for me. And I'll make the arrangement for you to get your pants. And I understand that you don't have a home. Well, lands owned by the state do not belong to anybody. You know. Other than the state. And some way, through common sense on the part of everybody, I think you will have a home. This facility is one of several magnificent facilities which we have built in East St. George. And by the way, I concede that East St. George is the most populous constituency. Because the question as to whether it's the best constituency, that's another yes. opinion. Yes. What I will say, however, is difficult to get a better fish anywhere else than by Dean. Yes. But equally, equally, you're not going to get a better curry goat than by four D's. It's your son. And Kalaloo and Boileen, which some people call oil dung. Well, there's a joint force place in South Rivers Park, you know, Connery, Byron, Class. <laughs> George Strong and Chile. You hear me? Join first place. And I invite you, I invite you to come up there and have those delicacies. And I would accept that you're doing good fish. <laughs> Excellent fish in fact. But there's a learning resource center up there at the campus, the community college campus. A multi-million dollar facility. And you notice the way in which we do things in the Unity Labour Party administration. You remember when we came to office and we said we are going to increase the numbers at the community college. And we started first by building timber buildings. Remember what they say? Yeah. But what we had, I said, just let's, let's be a mother. And then we did an expansion of over 35 million dollars, adding over 80,000 square feet in floor space. And where they used to have in the community college 
entities. Just a few hundred students in the aggregate. Now we have about 2,500 students. Yeah. Associate degrees and you have degrees and so on and so forth. So there's that facility there. But I will say that this one is a top class facility. I want those who go into school to do the calculation. You heard that Brent Bailey said, the chief engineer said that the construction cost was 2.339 million, and that is 9,200 square feet. Well, if you divide that by 9,200, you will get $250. Julian, this is $250 a square foot, not bad at all. Good quality for that money. Good quality. And I want to thank miners and the workers. Here, on the ground floor, we will see the main entrance and lobby and the magistrate's court. You have with the offices of the magistrate and the court clerk, and both of them have private washrooms, washroom facilities. And you have seating for 50 persons, a witness area, prosecution and defense, witness boxes and desks. We'll still have to hold anybody who is in the prison waiting to come to court over in the, the lock up at the, the station and bring them over. Well, the post office service all over the world is not what it used to be because people now hardly post letters. But you still need a post office. And that's it. There's a decay center consisting of a kitchen, office, and washroom with fixtures that allows for easy use by young children and able to accommodate 50 preschoolers. And you, you should go up to Fay Hall and see the magnificent facility which we have built there, including an early childhood center. One seat up there. Very beautiful. And we have to make sure that the persons who are at the center, at the preschool, at the daycare center, we have to make sure that they get the training and training opportunities are available for their further development. There's a tongue board office to provide the services for the Calico tongue board and there are washrooms, one male and one female washroom. And everywhere you go around here, you have a facility as inside there for the disabled. Just as you see, you have the ramp to come up on the wheelchair. That's how we have to make the modern buildings. On the first floor, we have the town hall, which could seat 70 persons or 250 standing. There's a stage, and you have private washroom facilities, and you have a bar and a kitchen area. So you see, it is intended that it can be used by people in the community. Functions can be held here, as happens at other learning resource centers. There's a computer room with 18 computer stations with internet access. Camilo has spoken about this in some detail. I want to add this. Nowadays, students are given their school-based assessment to do. They need a computer. Some of them have it in their rooms, some might have a laptop. They're having schools, but in Taliaqua, you're going to have 18 of them that could be properly managed for students who want to use to help them with their own preparation for their schoolwork and for their examinations. 
And hear me this. There's a program which we finance from Camillo's ministry. We borrowed in excess of two and a half million dollars US from the World Bank. Low rate of interest. We borrowed it and we gave it to young people who are involved in technology based industry. Gave them, not to lend them. The money range from 60 something thousand dollars in one case close to $250,000. They don't get the money one time. You have a plan and they, there's a committee which selected politicians not in that committee. And there are several young people who have benefited and we are seeking to have more money is put in that program. And tomorrow I have a discussion with the World Bank officials who are here because we have 66.8 million US dollars of soft loans over the next three years from the World Bank. 20 million out of it I'm putting into the new port which we're building. Because we have 40 million US already from the British government and we'll get 40 and 20, 60, we'll get the balance from the Caribbean Development Bank. So of the 66.6 million, I have 20 going to go somewhere else. The others, we are going to allocate, but I want some of it to be allocated again to the young people who are dealing with information technology. So use this facility well. The library has shelving for approximately 3,000 books and can see 20 persons. There's also an office for a librarian. I see the chief librarian here. I'm happy to see her. And there's a fire alarm system with panels located throughout the building and fire hoses on both floors for us to deal with the question of safety. And the external area, we have limited parking on the site to accommodate four vehicles at the main entrance. The magistrate has provided a separate entrance and parking as a security measure. Access is provided, and everybody will see it here, those who not here, they will hear about it. Access is provided to the compound by way of steel gates. Two for vehicular purposes and two for pedestrian. And there's a grass area provided for the daycare, preschool for the outdoor activities. There's an external access ramp we've said here for the disabled. Now, it is expected that this project will be used to the fullest. And there are other facilities nearby. I want to say that Clayton Bergen had worked very hard on this project. I want to thank you. And there's a relay the baton went to Camilo. You see how life is? If Linton had won, the baton would have come to Linton. <laughs> but he's a good man. That's how life is. And uh, the government and people of the Republic of China on Taiwan, we have to thank them. For their near full financing of this project, as they have done 
with several projects with us. You, the people of Calipua, deserve this facility. I have told you from Parliament that just wait a little bit longer. It is coming, and when it comes, it will be magnificent. Hurry, hurry, boy, now build goodness. We have worked together and produced this. We have a functioning civilization and no set of gunmen, no set of violent criminals can shake our civilization. We are determined to maintain law and order. I know some of the gunmen wouldn't be listening to me. But those who know any, get the message to them. Look, it might appear to be the easier path, but it carries enormous risks of jail, serious injury, or premature death. Try to get out of that business. And if we know anybody who is in that business, family members, try and talk to them. And let us, we have enough opportunities for training, let's get these things going with them. The opportunities are there. You have to take advantage of them. Today is the day not for lamentation. It is the day for an uplifting message. Arise. Be uplifted. And we go to our Father. Amen. In peace and grace. Thank you very much and God bless you.